spotlight, it's the Unity UT-195E Pro, a true RMS 6,000 count multimeter. The Unity 195E has been out for a little while, probably nine months to a year at this point. It's not totally new, but it's certainly not old as far as multimeters go. It's definitely on the new side. And one of its claims to fame is the fact that it's trying to gear itself towards the professional user. On the multimeter itself, it actually says professional electrician. Professional multimeters and electrician. Now, I guess they're trying to designate a certain target group. But yes, Unity is trying to gear itself with this particular model um, to the more high-end user. Now, there is three different varieties of the UT-195 series. There's the UT-195E which we are looking at today, the UT-195M and the UT-195DS. Now the DS has the dual display. That's the uh, biggest difference. This is sort of the mid-range one in between. So in the box, you get a uh, fairly decent set of test leads. These are Unity branded leads and the tips do pop off, exposing it's not a terribly pointy tip, but uh, certainly pointy enough. And you do have that different layer of protection. So if you want to go for a higher cat safety reading, obviously you would keep the cap on. General continuity testing, what have you, you want to take those caps off. They are rated for 20 amps. And as I said, they do have the Unity logo on the wires themselves. It's fairly long. Um, I'd say it's probably a little bit longer than your standard test leads. They actually feel pretty decent in the hand. Um, for me, size-wise, it's pretty well perfect. Not too small, not too big, and has a, a nice tactile feel. With a, uh, a good little grip here at the tip, so it's uh, fairly easy. If you're doing any lengthy testing sessions, you'll find these leads to be extremely comfortable. Also in the box, you get a really nice case and plenty of room for the probes, the meter, and anything else you want to throw in there. Of course, you get your UT-195E operating manual and uh, it's verbose enough that I actually like the layout. It's more of a brochure than a manual, but um, it's uh, quite well explained. And there's also a digital version available for download from the Unity website. Now I don't normally show the boxes per se, but in this case, you're getting quite a box. Big solid hunk of a box with a nice transparent plastic housing so when the meter ships you can see definitely what you're getting and once again on the meter they do state professional on the box and as well they have all of these specs for the three different models on the back speaking of specs you can see here right off the get-go that um, they are quite similar they all have the 60 millifarad range 60 mega ohm range the 20 amp range and the 6,000 count. As I said earlier, the only big difference is the UT-195DS, which has the dual display. And um, that is fairly it. Um, do have a high, higher frequency with the 195M and the 195DS as well. And I believe the refresh rate is slightly higher on the 195DS as well. But in terms of actual um, specs, really they're not that too far off. Now the dual display would have been nice, but you're actually paying quite a premium. In this case, um, I paid $170 
Canadian, so about 145 or so US. So it's definitely not a cheap multimeter. Now, as I said, Unity is trying to gear this meter towards the higher end user professional. And they're trying to invoke a sense of stability, um, ruggedness, uh, durability, what have you. And that all starts with the, um, the boot, the body, the chassis, whatever you want to call it. And in this case, Unity's done a really good job. This is a really nice feeling, solid body or chassis. And it has a, a really nice molding. It's um, kind of flukish, I guess, in terms of the, uh, the feel quality. It's not really rubbery. Um, it doesn't sort of stick to your hand like some boots. Just generally really nice feel. Now it is attached to the unit itself. So this does not come off. It is all together. Um, they're claiming a two meter drop proof protection. Now I'm not gonna try this today because I did purchase this with my own money. So um, yeah, nobody is paying me with it for this review. So in terms of, you know, throwing a $200 meter around, probably not gonna happen today. Uh, in the future, who knows, right? But uh, I tend to believe what they say just because it is so um, heavy duty feeling, rugged, what have you. Um, I really like the way it feels. Um, right away as well, if you pop open the tilting stand, you'll notice we have two symbols here. And they're pretty well known in the industry. One is the TUV Rhineland, and the other is the GS. Um, these are both uh, German standards that are recognized throughout Europe. Uh, they usually invoke quality, reliability, what have you. In fact, a lot of the Unity meters um, that are sold in Europe are actually better than the ones that uh, we receive in North America just because they have to attain the, the GS stamp in order to be sold over there. So um, that's probably a good thing. Um, having these two symbols of uh, or standards of certification generally mean that Unity really has to step up the game if they're going to live up to this standard. So it's usually better for the end user. So yeah, no crappy CE logo on the uh, 195E. So if we turn the meter on, turn the meter on, <laughs> we get that beep and uh, we're in business. So defaults to a volts AC. And I guess, you know, if they're saying on the meter itself, uh, electrician, that's probably a good voltage standard to be uh, defaulting to. We have those nice soft top, soft touch buttons at the top range hold maximum the light which we'll talk about shortly your rel a flashlight seems like every meter that comes out today has a flashlight and the ut195 is no different also have our frequency duty cycle and of course the select mode range button buttons themselves have a really nice tactile feel um definitely uh, invokes quality and uh yeah very nice Selector switch as well has a very interesting feel to it. It's um, probably made of the same material that the exterior of the boot is. So it has that nice sort of um, rubberized, texturized feeling, but uh, feels really nice. And in terms of the actual rotary selector switch itself, for my liking, it's probably a little on the mushy side. I prefer a more authoritative click. But that being said, it's not gonna get stuck in any ranges midway. Now you do have that annoying freaking beep that a lot of meters have. It just drives me insane. Honest to God, I don't know why manufacturers, OEMs decide that everybody has to hear a beep every time you change the freaking switch. I don't know why, it drives me nuts. At least if you're gonna do that, give us the ability to disable that. But in this case, we're stuck with it, so yeah. As well, the UT195 ships with the IP65 rating. What does that mean exactly? Well, it's basically completely sealed. 
uh, protection level, um, IP65 rated. Uh, has a two meter fall protection. It's dust proof, it complies with the IEC 60529, and it's also waterproof. So yeah, that's a lot of protection going on to this meter. So if you're on the outside with this, you really shouldn't have to worry about the elements because in this case, at least, Unity definitely has you protected. Now, if we look at the display itself, it's a large LCD uh, dual mode display. Actually, sorry, this is not a dual mode display. That is the uh, UT195DS. This is the uh, single display. Um, in terms of refresh rate, this unit is three times per second as well as the 195M. The upgraded 195DS has a five times per second uh, refresh rate. They're all true RMS. True root means square. Um, now this uh, 195E also has Another neat feature with this particular meter is the fact that it has the LZ mode. What is LZ exactly? Well, it's voltage measurement. Basically, it's supposed to provide a really low uh, impedance to the, uh, the conductor circuit, which ultimately should give you a more accurate, precise measurement. Um, it's also able to detect uh, ghost voltage. And another neat feature with LZ that I like to utilize is if I'm discharging capacitors, for instance, I like to do it with my meters and in LZ mode it's very fast and uh, extremely safe so if you have a high voltage capacitor you want to discharge put it into LZ mode and watch that cap quickly dissipate down to zero voltage now with the 195e we have your typical hold unfortunately it's just your typical hold I mean to me because we're taking up a notch or that's what unity is telling us I would have hoped for something a little more, you know, advanced, perhaps trigger hold, something along those lines. But no, in this case, you have to take your probes, do a measurement, find an extra finger and hit the hold button. All in all, nothing exciting. And uh, I really wish Unity would have taken that feature and brought it up a notch. 95, 195E also have your flashlight and it's quite bright quite large um, it's during the day right now so I can't really turn off the lights and it won't make a huge difference but uh, in terms of a flashlight it's definitely capable um, extremely bright one click and it turns off and since we're also taking a look at the back you do have this metallic little holder and if I can only get it up, I don't really have... Now, no jokes, guys. Okay, I got it up. Now, you can just hang this on, you know, whatever. I would have liked to seen this being included since they're targeting the professional with some sort of a bootstrap that you could just attach it to. Something like the uh, WH-5000A, which is a cheap meter, yet it ships with this really nice magnetic hanger so unity why couldn't you do the same thing now my biggest pet peeve with a lot of unity products is their tilt stand and unfortunately it's no different with the 195 yeah you've got this annoying freaking thing going on here so if you're walking around professionally trying to do your professional job on site and this Thing keeps you know like what is that all about why why don't know why now once it's up and out okay it's pretty solid no issues there yeah I like it it's wide so you've got that nice durability uh, even it's on an anti-stat mat right now but if it wasn't it would still be super stable and you can adjust the level pretty well to your liking so, I mean, that's a good thing. But, you know, this annoying. We see this on a lot of Unity uh, meters. In fact, the 139S, which I reviewed not too long ago, has the same annoying feature. That tilting stand just does not want to stay. And, yeah, Unity, you know, you, you, you've got to do something about this. Please. 
Another big feature that, uh, at least an upsell point for the 195E is the fact that in low light conditions, you do not turn the light on manually. In fact, the UNT 195E is supposed to do it automatically. Now, that's fine and dandy, but I still wish I could do an override and just turn the darn light on anytime I want, which I can simply by taking my finger and covering the sensor. The sensor is located right at the top of the display here. Now, once that sensor is invoked, backlight is enabled, you're going to have no problem. And when the light is bright enough, the backlight will automatically disengage after approximately 45 seconds to a minute. In the manual, they say 30 seconds, but it's definitely longer than that. It's at least a minute before that backlight will turn off. But as you can see with the backlight enabled, yeah, it is nice and bright and crisp and the digits are super easy to read. You do have that nice bar graph at the bottom. And yeah, generally the display is quite pleasant on the eyes. Speaking of the display, it is your HTN LCD variety. It's not the cheapest. It's not the, um, the best. It's sort of in between. Um, I know they're a lot easier to produce. Um, for the mass market, so it's a good uh, fiscal standpoint of view um, for Unity to use this sort of display. Um, yeah, that being said, I have no qualms with it. My biggest qualm, once again, is the fact that there is no manual override for this light. I really wish I could turn it on and off when I wanted to. Now, if for some reason I wanted to turn the light off, you press that off button. Now, that's the problem. You see, this is some weird engineering glitch because once you turn it off I can't turn it back on I can turn it off manually I can override it but I can't turn it back on unless I do this now once you do it once you can't do it again so yeah this is weird if I want to turn that backlight on again I actually have to turn the meter off so turn it off turn it back on now, I want that backlight enabled Put my f finger over it and it's on again. Oh, I don't want the backlight. Turn it off. Oh, you know what? I want the backlight. Eh, I can't turn it on. I have to turn the meter off first. That is a big pain in the butt. And I don't know how that even passed Q&A because from a general perspective, um, it's not acceptable. So I should be able to turn that light on and off without having to turn the meter on and off. What if I'm doing a test? What if I'm trying to get critical data at some point? I got to stop everything? Doesn't make sense. So Unity, I don't know what you were thinking, but apparently you weren't in this respect. So please do something about this light enable disable feature. So the max min function, um, hit the max button once and it will give you your maximum reading thus far mode. Hit min. Well, it's all on the same button, obviously, max min. Defaults to min on the second touch, and it tells you what your lowest level of measurement was thus far. Hit it again, and it will keep in real time telling you where your max is at. Next, we're going to look at the probes themselves. How good are they? Whenever you're doing a resistance measurement, usually you have a little bit of offset, and you can disable that by using something called rel. And what that does, it just takes the offset and removes it from the actual measurement itself. All you do is you short circuit the probes and we'll see how accurate they are. So point two, so we would just hit the rel and now we're in rel mode, do it again. And there we are. So if you're doing a precise resistance measurement, what have you, it's always a good idea to rel out the leads if need be, just because when you want accuracy. Now in high resistance modes, it doesn't matter, so really no need to, to do that. First mode of measurement will be with diodes. We have five LEDs lined up. Here we go, starting off with the red one. And there we are, 1.8 is the forward voltage drop and it lights it up, no problem. Starting off with the yellow one, 1 1.8 voltage drop, and once again illuminated without an issue. Same thing for the green, for the white, nice and bright, 2.5. Finally, 
Now in diode mode, you can see that the test range for the 195E is claimed to be 3.5 volts. And if we look at the meter, it's actually a little bit better. It's more like 3.7 volts. So uh, you won't have any trouble when it comes to uh, testing LEDs with the 195E. Okay, you guys know I like my continuity. Can't get enough of continuity. Don't give up your day job, there. Thanks. All right, in continuity mode, here we go. Stock probes. How good or fast or bad and slow is it? Here we go. And guess what? I'm not in continuity mode. Eh. Try that again. There we go. Now we're in continuity mode. So it's not fast. It is latched. But yeah, it's a little, little on the slow side. Now the battery light is coming up because there is a rather older 9 volt battery. I should have changed it before this review, but I chose not to. Hopefully that doesn't play a big part. In fact, I'll swap that out before I do the rest of the review. But that being said, I mean, it's not bad. It's certainly loud. Okay, I'm going to give that about an 8 out of 10, actually. Yeah, of course you knew I was going to try the Probe Masters on this guy, right? Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Awesome. Super fast. Super latched. Nice and loud. My only qualm, we have no... LED. Why? Why? Now, Unity's El Cheapo brother here, the UT39C+, and it's dirt cheap. It's like 20 bucks, if even that. Not 200. Now, this cheapy... Look at that. You've got this gorgeous LED right there. So if you're in a loud production environment, what have you, you know, you're not always going to hear stuff. Sometimes you have safety uh, goggles on. You know, you don't want to blow out your eardrums in some of these noisy workplaces. So you're not going to hear that continuity, but you're sure as hell going to see it, right? So why can they implement it on a cheap $20 meter and not an expensive $200 meter that they're gearing towards professionals? <sighs> I don't know. Yeah. In resistance mode, currently sitting at 9 mega ohms. No problems there. 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 mega ohm. So quick to settle on accurate. No worries there. Okay, we're now in capacitance mode. I've got a 40 millifarad, actually I'm sorry, a 47 millifarad capacitor here and a 10 millifarad, a 10,000 microfarad capacitor right here. Now, this is capable of going up to 60 millifarad, so it should be able to check both of these caps without any problem. Now you're seeing right now we do have a uh, indicator of 18 0.01819 nanofarads. Now, in the meter, on the, sorry, in the manu manual for the meter, geez, if I only speak English, they're actually talking about this intrinsic capacitance. Um, so here they're saying the meter will display a fixed reading when there is no input. This is the intrinsic capacitance value in the meter. So, Unity is aware of this sort of variable that comes up and they're saying that it's completely normal. So let's not worry about it. Let's try these two caps and see what happens. Start off with the 10 millifarad. Here we go. Let's see how quick it is. Still in the microfarad range. Nothing has changed. No indicator as well, which I don't like. I do prefer when a meter has some sort of enunciator telling you where you are. Okay, there it is. So 9.45 millifarad. So yeah, no issues there. A little on the slow side I found though. Let's check this bigger 47 millifarad cap. Here we go. In the millifarad range now seem to be a little bit faster than last time and oh there we are oh we had an ol at one point but no it 
Stabilizing and are we done? Are we done, Unity? Wow. So there we go, 49.11 millifarad. So slightly over, oh, now it's cycling. Now it's going, hmm, that's interesting. What? Yeah, I'm not liking that. Let's let's just try something here. Just discharge this again. And we'll try this one more time. Prefer a little more in the accuracy department. Here we go again. Let's see what happens. Turn that backlight on. 42.62 millifarad. So not sure what that was about. Perhaps I, um, I didn't discharge this cap, I don't believe, for a while, so it might be my fault. But uh, yeah, all seems okay now. Okay, now I know not everybody measures these big capacitors. In fact, a lot of people do lots of Arduino work, what have you, and you're working with small, small caps. Okay, here's another cap on the other end of the scale. This is a 0.1 microfarad cap. And let's measure this guy. Yeah, just over 100 nanofarads, so 106.8, so no problems there. Okay, and we're currently in current mode. We're just over 1.02 amps, and we're showing up as 1.03 on the Unity. Bringing it down. Let's try 0.35 amps, and uh, spot on. Okay, we're gonna do a quick voltage measurement test now, and I have a Kairitsu KEW1052, known as the Ku1052, up against the Unity UT195E. So we're sitting at just under five volts, 4.9 volts. So let's start taking it up a notch. And we're gonna to go to 9.6 volts, according to the DC power supply, 9.7 for the Kairitsu, 9.69. Well, now they're both 9.69, so they are neck and neck. Take it up. Let's go up to 14.1 volts. 14.2 for the Kairitsu, 14.19 for the Unity. And, whoa, look at that. They're pretty well spot on. Let's just keep on going. How high can you go? Let's go, let's do 20 volts. 20.1 on the power supply, 20.17 for the Kairitsu, 20.16, no, 1.8 for the Unity. Now 1.9. So, wow, yeah, they're uh, really neck and neck. We're going to max it out now. Going up to 31.8 volts. 31.87 for the Kairitsu. 31.87 for the Unity. So, wow. There you go. These guys are pretty well twins in terms of voltage. So, uh, yeah, good job, guys. And uh, there you have it. Oh, you know what? Why don't we turn on that backlight and let's just compare the bar graph scale. Okay, let's see if I can get in just a little closer. Let's just see how they are in terms of refresh rate. There's one that's faster than the other. I'm gonna swap up and down in the voltages. I don't know guys, what do you think? Pretty well, it seems to be neck and neck to me. I really don't see a difference in terms of the actual um, speed of that scale. I'd say it's a tie. Okay, so let's do a quick comparison of the size of these meters. Um, if we take out a small Mestec DM91A, which I did a review on recently, you can see it's literally a third the size. Yeah, it's definitely a full size meter. All these meters here, these three are definitely big meters. Um, the WH5000A, which I recently did a review on, still definitely smaller than the Unity. And the Kairitsu Q1052, also a big meter, is still just a little bit smaller than the 195E. And if we put them all on their side, side to side, you can still see that the Unity is definitely a big beast. So, um... Yep. It is not a small meter, folks, so just be aware of that if you decide to purchase this meter. 
That being said, it really, um, it's solid. It's not a light meter by any means. Um, no, it's definitely the Karitsu is heavier than the Unity. And oh yeah, I mean the Unity is literally twice the, the weight of the uh, WH-5000. So um, yeah, big meter, but uh, very easy to hold in the hands. And uh, I think the size is good. Okay, so you've blown a fuse. God, what do you do now? you got to replace it, silly. How hard is that? Well, in the case of the UT-195E, it isn't. It's super simple. You do have one, two, three, four, five, count them, five Phillips screws that you have to undo. Once you've taken those Phillips out, you can just simply remove that back cover and voila! Look at that. There you go. That's called easy access, folks, and I like it. Why we don't see that in most multimeters, I don't know. So instantly you have access to the battery, and in this case it's a Panasonic, which I will just remove. And so you have the battery well here, and the polarity is marked nice and big, minus and positive. Here in the current side range, you have a massive HRC fuse. And in the milliamp range, you have a smaller um, ceramic style fuse, but still quite large. Um, sort of the same size you'd see in a Gaussian on the milliamp range. And another nice point worth pointing out is the fact that, yeah, we had to take out five screws, but look, they're all threaded inserts. So no matter how many times you have to do that, you don't have to worry about screwing up the meter. Okay. Now, if you want to take a deeper look inside, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six more screws to undo. And once those are undone, take it apart and ooh, la 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 la. First, let's flip it over, see if we have any shielding. And guess what? No freaking shielding! Gee! So the meter has some nice high ridges here for blast protection. So that's gonna definitely help if something goes amiss. Uh, yeah, no shielding, uh, no... <sighs> not, uh, not too happy about that. Here on the back also, we've got the uh, flashlight header. So this is what powers that bright luminescent LED when you're in the dark. Now here, let's take a closer look in Wild. I mean, this is where Unity has definitely stepped up their game. Here we have a, a nice, huge 11 amp fuse. And we also have a, another um, 600 milliamp on the milliamp range. Both ceramic, obviously this one's HRC, and it is a huge one. It's interesting, on that fuse itself, it actually says, designed in Germany, assembled in China. So they've actually put that right on the fuse. Okay, let's take a look at this gorgeous input protection. So here we are on the milliamp side of things right here. And you can see right away we've got that uh, 600 milliamp ceramic fuse there. Uh, what other do we have in terms of input protection? We have this diode clamping going on over here. So, and we do have some uh, resistors as well. So uh, for the milliamp range, we have a diode clamping and the nice ceramic style fuse. Um, oh yeah, and uh, we have another diode at the top there. Now if we work our way down to the current range, yeah, we've got that gorgeous 11 amp HRC fuse. Of course, we have the current shunt itself. And as well, do we have that? Yeah, we do have a model metal oxide varistor right here on the current range. Now, in terms of the protection voltage side of things, let's see what we have. Um, yeah, these PTCs here. Sorry, my big finger's in the way. So we have a gorgeous bevy of PTCs on the voltage side. So, yeah, in terms of input protection, I mean, it's really hard to get much better than this. Mobs, PTCs. HRC style fuses, diode clamps, um, yeah, I'm impressed. Now this is where Unity has put the P for protection and taken it seriously. 
taking a side view of the uh, input protection slash PCB. Just a really gorgeous looking PCB. Super clean. Um, very well laid out. Uh, look at those tracks. I mean, yeah, really nicely done. This was definitely high grade quality uh, PCB work here. Um, I don't see one flaw on this PCB. Not one. And I looked at it really closely. Um, everything is superbly soldered and uh, high quality components. Um, very nicely done. This guy right here, this is the LCD driver. That's a Hycon HYT613. So that is your LCD controller driver right there. Right beside it is the crystal oscillator. And here is the IC. Let's see if we can get a closer look at that. So the main IC right here is none other than the venerable DTM0660 uh, from DreamTech International, a Hong Kong based manufacturer of integrated circuits. Uh, super popular multimeter microcontroller. Does all the uh, ADC, the analog to digital conversion. It drives uh, all sorts of things. And the config data, I mean, the dead giveaway is always this little EEP ROM right here. That little EEP ROM is what stores all uh, of the configuration data for that IC. And that EEP ROM itself um, the 24C02A, uh, right there, yeah, that directly talks to the main IC. So, super popular combination right now in uh, multimeters. You see this uh, IC a lot on the lower end Chinese meters. Um, it's almost everywhere these days. But, um, yeah, to see it on this higher end uh, professional series was uh, a little shocking, but uh, kind of cool. So, uh, there you have it. Finally, over here, we have an EFM32. Zero Gecko um, microcontroller, ARM-based uh, processor, doing a lot of more, uh, a lot of the, uh, might be some of the TRMS conversion as well. Um, so there you have it. And finally, if we take a look at the input jacks themselves, yeah, I like what I see. They have the nice double nut variety here with that little um, uh, pin header see if I can get in there a little bit closer. So yeah, these guys are not going anywhere. Those are screwed on with a wing nut and they're in for the long term. Really nice soldering as you can see on a closer inspection. Um, a gorgeous soldering actually. Uh, wow. Very, very nice. Yeah, so it doesn't matter how many times you're going to be playing with your probes. The UT-139 is going to be able to handle it. No problems. Very clean PCB, very nicely laid out. Um, good job, Unity. Coming back, closing thoughts. Closing thoughts on the Unity UT-195E. Well, this is really a well-made meter. Definitely Unity has taken the game up a notch. They were serious when they said they wanted some professional input protection, and they delivered. It's definitely solid in terms of the internals. Externally speaking, um, because you're putting a professional attachment to this device, I would have preferred to see um, a hanger, a magnetic hanger for this meter, um, a higher resolution meter as well, 6,000 count, it's okay, but it would have been great to see something much higher, something along the lines of a 20,000 count, what have you. There's really... No reason why Unity did not put any sort of shielding within this multimeter, especially with the designation of it being professional. That really irks me. Generally speaking, it's super well built, super solid. Hey, you drop this, don't worry. Pick it up, dust yourself off, and keep on going. I have no worries whatsoever that this meter is not um, going to have any issues in the uh, wear and tear department. Generally speaking, I really like it. Is it worth almost $200? I'll let you be the judge. But I think the Unity 195E is a definite step in the right direction. Unity, there's a lot of things that you can still do to make it truly a professional multimeter. So you're on the right track. Just keep on going. I'm going to give the Unity UT 195E a solid 3.5 out of 5 stars. Thanks for watching, everybody. And most importantly, keep on testing.